Uh, hi, I'm JJ, uh, as it says up there. Uh, I'm going to be doing a talk about Istio here. Um, but if you don't know, uh, I actually wrote this talk originally for about 30 minutes, and I didn't realize we had an hour. So there's two options here. One, I can um, do uh, an introduction to Kubernetes in general. Uh, if you don't know, tomorrow we'll be doing a Kube 101 class uh, from, from IBM. Uh, yes, I work at IBM. No, I don't know anything about Red Hat. Uh, if, you're, if you come up to me and say the word Red Hat, I have a gentleman's agreement with my boss, then I'm going to stand up and walk out of the room. So please don't ask me any questions. I don't know anything. Uh, we are excited that everything's moving forward, et cetera, et cetera. But that's as much, you know as much as I do. Cool? Yes? Thank you. Um, so do you like the idea of the Kube 101, kind of just like a, an overview of Kube? One, Kube? Perfect, I'll do that then. And then I'll get into Istio. And my goal with this talk actually is to show you Istio on why you should care. Hence the, the statement of what is this thing and why do I give a fuck. Um, again, hi, I'm JJ from the IBM cloud. Uh, first of all, who knew IBM has a cloud? Okay, cool. Um, you'd be amazed on how many times I say that. I either get a, uh, a giggle in the front or nobody raises their hands. <laughs> So uh, tomorrow at the workshop, we will be giving you a promo code or an actual cluster that you'll be able to play around with, too, that you can play for about a month with it. So again, plug in the workshop tomorrow. If you can, please be there. All right. So let's go ahead. And I will be showing this off, um, this exact same presentation tomorrow, but I won't be talking about it. We'll actually be working through it together. So if you do come tomorrow, there will be some repeated stuff. But you know, it's always nice to see things over and over again. All right. Um, so we actually have a couple more IBMers here. Um, doesn't seem they're in this room right now. So uh, you'll see them. They'll be wearing t-shirts that look a lot like this uh, around the place. So let's talk about containers. We um, Obviously, we are moving towards a cloud-native world. We have to deal with containers. What is the difference between a container and a VM? By the way, if you have any questions or want to yell something or throw something at me, please do. I actually like presenting in a much more informal way because I know if you have a question, someone else in this room will have that exact same question. I do not believe, no, there are no dumb questions. Um, we are here all to learn something, right? Yes? No? Fuck it, let's go home. No, okay, whatever. Oh, by the way, I do use a lot of profanity, and I don't even realize I do it, and I'm sorry if I offend you. Okay, so the short of the difference between a container and a virtual machine, as we all probably know, virtual machines sit on a hypervisor. They have their unique um, kernel and multiple machines on multiple hypervisors. A container, as it says there, a shared base kernel, that um, allows you to have exactly what you need to run inside of the container. Yes, people use some Docker forms in some places to lightweight virtualization, but let's go have a beer later and we can talk about that more. Okay, so um, why would you use a container? Obviously, it's a fast startup. Who's actually ever done Docker run, dash IT, uh, Ubuntu, latest, bin bash? Seconds, right? Or when's the last time you asked your uh, IT team to give you a VM on VMware? Months, right? <laughs> it's, a, it's a huge difference. Uh, also, better your, uh, resource, re resource utilization, you can just basically shove more and more into it. Because what is a container but just a wrapper around C groups and namespacing? So why would you care about Kubernetes? Um, it's to, I, I, as someone on the road who talks about Kubernetes and how, uh, why you should even care, and plus, I mean, my represent, I represent Istio on the IBM Kubernetes server, service, um, I have this question always bother me because hopefully you'd be, you're talking to me because you want to know you would like to use Kubernetes. But the moment that it really clicked for me was when what, I, what Kubernetes is, is just an orchestrator and a scheduler. You take it a container of some sort. Um, we all say Docker. I'm going to say Docker. You know, that's like saying Kleenex instead of a tissue. Uh, if you don't know, Kleenex is an American tissue brand. 
Um, and you just give that it Docker container and say, run it. All, containers, all Kubernetes is is a shared API across multiple nodes that you're, you have a bunch of stuff around it. It is actually very, very bare bones when you, when you boil it down to the actual thing it does. It's relying a lot on the ecosystem to do many different things, and also including Istio, which is when we'll get to Istio to show why you should care about this, because it's not naturally inside of Kubernetes. Okay, so let's talk about some general concepts inside of Kubernetes. Who knows what a pod is? Okay, cool, I don't have to go over that. Who doesn't know what a pod is? Go talk to one of the people who raise their hands. It's a joke. There, literally no one raised their hand, by the way. <laughs> okay, who knows what a deployment is? Okay, so just to, just to kind of make sure and level set a deployment, and if I'm wrong, please tell me, but this is how I understand this, how it works, is you tell Kubernetes, I want to run this thing. You want to have so many scales of this thing, and it's a YAML file that just sends up into the ether, and it runs the thing. A replica set is just basically a way to know how many versions of the thing you need to run, and a daemon set is completely blanking. Yes, exactly. He said a replica set is one part, a one node on every single cluster. Um, let's see here. All right, let's talk about actually how all this comes together. We, the, the smallest unit of something inside of a Kubernetes, inside of the Kubernetes, Kubernetes ecosystem is a container. Container has a pod on, so, on top of it. For instance, in this case, pod C. Normally, they're not like pod C. They have some really crazy hash at the end, so let's just make it easy and say pod C. A pod contains one or more containers. Istio has something called a sidecar, which is actually something that shoves into a pod, um, and it is ar arguably another container inside of that pod. Again, we'll show, see that in a minute. So, for instance, you have two containers here. A pod sits on top of a node. Again, back to the shared um, API and the way multiple nodes across multiple machines, you have uh, one to n number of nodes. I, I don't actually know of a um, max number of nodes out there right now. Uh, so, that's actually really interesting. So, in theory, you have one API endpoint, you're like, hey, run this thing, it could be on n, n number of nodes. So, as you see, we have three nodes here. Pretty cool. Damn it. That Wi-Fi password is supposed to be higher. I, I missed that. As you can see, multiple different layers, multiple different uh, containers on different pods running through pod uh, B through D, A, E. So let's take that pod A1, right up there. When you say you want a de uh, deployment replica set of two, that means I want, you tell Kubernetes, I want two of pod A1 somewhere. So obviously we have one there, so it'll give us another one. And back to the statement the gentleman made just a moment ago, uh, it's on two different nodes. You can actually uh, work on the affinity, yes, affinity, uh, of different styles with replica sets, and there is insane amount of options, and I'm telling you, insane. So you can get lost in those rules pretty quickly. Deployment provides upgrade and rollback features, which is nice too, because, you know, uh, who broke production? Yeah, you want to roll back, don't you? Oh, actually, roll forward, right? That's what we do nowadays. We don't roll, for we don't roll back anymore. So Eva's like, come on, JJ. <laughs> so let's talk about failure recovery. One of the best things about Kubernetes is, again, you tell it, hey, I want this thing to be running. So if something blows up, like that guy, but did you notice, well, it's not a very good description, but as you see the replica sets have a little blue box around it. As you notice, that one is not in a replica set. Who thinks that one's gonna come back? Oh, there we go, thank you. Yes, yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. I'm gonna wake up at three in the morning and actually uh, restart up that container again, or pot again. No, because it's not in a replica set, Kubernetes doesn't know that it needs to be out there. Or deployment, I'm sorry, it's in a deployment. Yeah. Oh, God damn it. God. All right, all right. Thank you, CZ. Anyway, as you see, because it's not part of a deployment, it, is, it goes away and it's gone. Now this guy, 
It, it is part of a deployment. Pod B, as you can see, has a little other color line around it. And because it goes away, because that node decided to take a shit, it goes away, and hey, look, it comes back. There we go, comes back. Which is nice, right? Having a deployment, you will always make sure it comes back. So again, this blows up, this replica set was said to, goes away, comes back. Again, nodes don't matter, they're just basically CPUs for, um, or compute for Kubernetes to do things. So that's good. Let's talk about some service discovery. So inside of Kubernetes, they, there's an actual DNS service to, so you can create ways to talk to one another. So if you have container X to do, do container Y, you, internally, you can actually talk to one another. But before that, inside of a pod, containers can talk to one another, just like they say there. You go ahead and open up a port outside of the pod to say, hey, like, open up pod, pod, um, port 5000 on this. Then you create something called a service that uh, says that port 80 talks to port 5000 of this pod. Does that make sense? It's pretty diagram, it's a nice little diagram, right? So in this, in this case, foo web. Then um, you can tell pod A here to talk to the service of foo web, and because of the DNS, it'll know exactly who to talk to. As you can see, it builds some nice little connections. And because it horizontally scales, you can have multiple different pods with a replica set, see how it comes together, to go across and it can load balance between them. I will say though, um, actually we'll get there in a second, hang on. So let's talk about node port. Who uses node port in production? We need beers later because you shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> um, node port is, it was the easiest way to do things. Um, Unfortunately, uh, it's, a way we, it's a way we teach how to walk, work, walk into the world uh, of Kubernetes, but you should never actually run it in production because there are many, many other options. As you can see, this opens up port 80 directly to this pod C here, um, and it's not there. There is supposed to be a really large number at the top of that, and that's what a node port does. It takes some really super high crazy um, number uh, attaches that port to that in external port to like port 5000 in this case. For me at least, when I talk to most people who run Kubernetes, this is what most people use, or is it the load balancer service to make sure that you load balance between two different pods, uh, or multiple pods I should say. Um, I haven't actually confirmed this, and I keep saying I do whenever I present, but I haven't actually done it yet, um, I believe there are multiple different ways of the load balancing algorithm. It's not just like one, one, one. Thank you for uh, verifying that. Um, it is, it, there's a whole world of that stuff and it's, it is extremely powerful. Um, the most, probably the most advanced topic inside of Kubernetes is what is called an ingress, ingress controller. I'm gonna just kind of flip through this real fast and walk you through it. Um, but if you can understand ingress, ingress, ingress controllers, not egress, ingress controllers, uh, you've pretty much mastered the, one of the hardest concepts of vanilla Kubernetes. Okay, so this is a standard ingress controller um, file. And as you can see, there are multiple paths around. Basically, an ingress wires together your application stack. So if you, okay, first of all, who's running a database inside of Kubernetes? We need, <laughs> he's just here to troll me, I know this. Um, first of all, there's a lot of conversations about running uh, databases inside of uh, Kubernetes. Kubernetes, uh, for me personally, um, and when I'm starting to look at this more and more, I'm, on, I'm in the camp do not put your database inside of Kubernetes. Use, <laughs> use an external system if you're in AWS, something like RDS or a hosted or have a DBA that actually runs a cluster for you and just have, use a HTTP get across or whatever, or whatever API you wanna use. 
Um, bear with me, this example will assume we're running a database inside of a Kubernetes. Once again, I want to preface that because I, I struggle with it. Anyway, okay. So let's take, for instance, um, this pod right here is a three node um, database, sure? Which is our data plane right here. What this does is this ingress controller says whenever somebody comes into foo web, um, you talk to this container here, which would be an Nginx front end or whatever, doesn't really matter. Um, and then it points to the data plane and then comes to this pod here. As you can see, we have open service ports and the things kind of fit together. Now I realize this is a very simple example, but when you start playing in the real world and wiring things together, this thing gets really, 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 really hard. <laughs> and you will be up at three in the morning wondering why that little space wasn't there, which caused the whole thing to fail. That, that's a YAML joke, if you didn't know. Okay. Cool, any questions here? No? Wow, all right. Um, finally, just this is my whole 101 talk bit of Kubernetes. Kubernetes has secrets built in. There's a whole um, ecosystem of security tools coming out with Kubernetes also. But the beauty of it is you can have secrets stored inside of Kubernetes and actually have a way for secrets to be accessed. Um, we all need to be secure. I realize that. Uh, if you, if, as you move closer and closer to production and those types of ideas, uh, you need to put this earlier in your in investigation in, instead of later. Okay. So uh, the, once again, I would, I'm gonna go over that again a little tomorrow. I'm gonna go longer through that, um, walk through more details, and then we'd actually be doing some typey typey stuff. So once again, uh, please come to the workshop. Okay, any questions? No, yes? Thoughts? I'm a Pisces. I, I kind of like watching TV. Not, I'm not much of a walker. Okay. So, let's talk about Istio. As you see, um, or as, as we were, as we just saw with Kubernetes in general, um, there's a lot of primitives inside of Kubernetes. And back to the load balancer example, um, there's a handful of things to be able to do networking. Because, but networking is still hard. Nobody, really? Thought that might actually get a, a giggle. So you actually have to worry about all of these other things. It's not just a load balancer of your like little web app anymore, right? You have to worry about uh, authentication going down. You gotta worry about failure management. Um, who knows the tweet that said, what was the joke? Uh, we moved to a microservices architecture because we wanted a murder mystery every time something went wrong. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's true. Cloud native, it really is fucking hard, right? Um, it's really nice. It allows you to get velocity, but <laughs> it's, it's hard. And if you've ever been an ops person, like I was an old school, you know, Apache ops guy back in the day, um, microservices are hard. All these things come for free. Uh, inside of Istio, um, it's quite powerful. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna flip back and forth between this and the terminal. I have a uh, Kubernetes cluster right here, right here, right here. Nope, no, that's not it. Here we go. Um, there. And as you, as you can assume, it's on, the, it's on IKS, it's on IBM Cloud. Uh, I'm actually gonna be installing Istio, and I'm gonna play around with it while I'm going through presentations, so you can kind of see the, the beauty of it. Uh, and if you have questions while I'm going through it or why, uh, please, please ask. Okay, I'm gonna sit down here. And I'm gonna get some feedback on the mic. No, okay. All right. Oh, and if you didn't know, um, Istio is the Greek word for sale. So we are slowly but surely getting more and more Greek into our ecosystem of Kubernetes. Does everyone know what Kubernetes actually means in Greek? We got one. Helmsman, yeah, it, it means helmsman. Um, also means captain. No, I don't. 
Project 729. Yeah. Oh, nice. Seven spokes, that's awesome. I never, oh yeah, three, yeah, huh, nice. Cool, thank you. <laughs> okay, so, the, um, by the way, the, uh, this is actually built off of a lightning talk that I have that I do at other conferences, um, and I usually just talk about the commands, but because I have the time, I'm actually gonna walk through the commands at the end. Uh, I have a slide with a URL that you can take this and play this at home. And if you can't come to the workshop tomorrow and you give me your email address or take my card, I can send you a promo code that you can run all these commands yourself too. And yes, here in Europe, you don't have to have a data center in like the US. Hey, I realize it's important to say. Okay. So, first thing first, because like all good software in this world, we curl bash. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and we bring it down. I was expecting this to be faster. Yep, that's the story of my life. All right, so um, I'll go into Istio here. I actually already have Istio installed on this box, or on this laptop, so even though I'm not gonna do the path quite now, oh, oh no, oh, fuck it. Get the path going. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply Helm service. And I don't think I actually have Helm installed on there. Oh, see, there we go. Oh wait, hold on, I don't think I have Helm. Who knows what Helm is? Well, how would you describe Helm in three words? Perfect, it's Kubernetes packing, package manager. Because that's what we need in this world, another package manager. Oops. There we go. And then, um, so if I remember correctly, and I don't want to completely um, lie here, but uh, I believe the Helm plan, or Helm chart, sorry, plan, chart, uh, that's Habitat chart there, um, is uh, being rewritten. Uh, so, even though this is a way to install it right now, I believe they're rewriting it for Helm version three, which will be coming out soon. So keep that in mind. And why is this taking so long? This shouldn't be that slow. Come on. Maybe? Nothing? Come on. It's thinking about it. Maybe. Okay. Are there really? Um, thinking. So I initialize Helm. That looks like it gets there. That makes sense. Now I go ahead and install Helm. Oh, okay. Helm release. It's LS, isn't it? Is it Helm LS or Helm releases LS? There you go. Okay, there we go. So as you can see, I have a um, deployed Istio instance. So we now have the Istio architecture on there. Um, so I actually have a three minute long video on IBM Cloud's um, YouTube channel where I give you everything you know to in, about Istio in three minutes. Interestingly enough, as soon as I released that, uh, they broke Mixer up into two different applications, so it was already out of date. There's a, there's a documentation joke there if, you, if you're looking for one. No? Get it? As soon as you release something, it's out of date. Nothing? Really? Okay. It really is. It really is. So um, I'm going to go ahead and install the Istio demo here where this is uh, something called a book info. And as that goes, as you can see, it's going. Um, I'm going to install book info. And this is an example from the direct Istio site. Uh, it is one of the better examples of a micro, uh, microservices architecture application out there. That's a toy app that is not what you would do in real production. Uh, here's the actual uh, 
architecture. Uh, as you see, you have a Python front end, um, a Java middleware, uh, Ruby back Ruby back end, and then a Node back end. Because like with all new um, enterprises, we don't all just write in Java anymore. We write in the language that actually does the job that we're looking to. In this case, we are going to be changing um, this Java uh, reviews containers from version one, two, and three, where you see one does not have any stars, version two has stars, and version three have, excuse me, red stars. By the way, Red Stars is one of my favorite songs by a band called Birthday Massacre. I think. Yeah. Okay. So let's go ahead and deploy that app. And as you see, because I just pulled down Istio, I'm using the Istio CTL or Istio cuddle command, um, which almost mirrors kubectl uh, uh, completely. You can almost feel like they're building it so uh, eventually they can just roll it into kubectl, which that's a different conversation. We should have beers later if we really wanted to have that conversation because, you know, separation of powers and all that jazz. Um, but as you see, because I just pulled it down, I'm going to that samples directory and taking that exact flipbook info where we created the reviews, one, two, three, ratings, details, which goes back to this. Cool, we're all, we're all together here? Yes? Yes, JJ? Perfect, thank you. All right. So, uh, sanity check real quick. Actually, how about this? Uh, external IP. So here is the IP. Oops. Just product pH. Of course. <laughs> um, let's do some sanity checks first. We're just making sure our routing rules are what we expect. And then we're making sure that we're going everywhere. And I'll open this up here in just a second. Now, come over here. Of course not. That would be too easy. Um, so let's take a look at this gateway rule real fast so we can talk about it. All right. So here is an Istio, um, Istio YAML that sends up some, uh, some virtual services and some gateways and whatnot. As you can see, um, we'll go through more of these here in a moment, but n with normal Kubernetes, you don't have these, these primitives. Uh, Istio gives you these primitives to be able to do stuff, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, when we start doing the actual um, routing here in a second, uh, I'll show you what made me at least finally understand the power of Istio, which actually is right here. These matching rules, which is really nice. Did I spell product page wrong? Product page, yeah. Post not found, product page. Son of a bitch. Um, okay. Oh, is it, oh, that's right, 9080. Oh, son of a bitch. Just thinking about it. Maybe. Well, anyway, let's keep going. Because you know demos, they always work how you expect them to. Okay, so um, this right here, uh, these commands actually will force all the traffic to that version one, which I'll do now. Assuming I actually check my notes properly here. Um, do, do, do. All the virtual services to one. Oops, guy. Oh my gosh, really? So back to Emacs. Oops. Can you guys read that? Yes? Is it okay? Um, the most important portion of this is these routing rules right here, or this one right here. If, you actually, if, if I'd actually gotten the other one working, which I will get it working here in a second, um, this will force all traffic 
whenever you bring in from the ingress controller, uh, or gateway, sorry, um, to Istio, it looks like, hey, where am I supposed to send this traffic? It has intelligence routing. You can put multiple different um, rules inside of it. This one specifically says, hey, the ratings are only supposed to go to the subset of V1. So, so you, inside that little uh, YAML file, we created some metadata that this is version one for the ratings app. So we matched that one against this one, and now when you come in from the top, it only goes to V1 and doesn't pay attention to V2 or V3, which is really important here when I show you the next step. Do, do, do. Maybe. Really? Okay. So, we'll come back over here. Oh, here we go. Let's take a look at these destination rules real quick. More YAML in our lives. Um, as you can see, that subset right here, the rules to version one goes to the matches against that version, version name. Um, there's a bunch of other stuff in here that you know, this is the actual running config. Um, you can edit the actual running configs inside of Kubernetes by just a simple command. Uh, yes, have RBAC. RBAC's important. Because, you know, I mean, unless you give everyone keys to the kingdom, which, that's a different conversation. <laughs> All right. I swear, when I, when I tested this last night, it was actually working. Um, this is very frustrating. All right, so let's go ahead and do the next version two here. And the most important portion of this, after it gets done, as you can see it was configured, is that they actually have a, a user inside the demos called uh, a user named Jason. And if you look right here, this is the moment that Istio finally really clicked for me. Um, assuming I could have actually brought that website up, which I'll work on it in just a second here. Um, you, inside of Istio, you can have arbitrary HTTP headers. So you can have a hash, you can have a specific username, um, and you can read from those arbitrary uh, HTTP headers and match against them. So in this case, if we were actually able to bring up the website, I would log in as JSON, and then we would see the black stars, because only the JSON user has access to version two of that container. So extrapolate that a little bit farther, Right? You could have multiple different versions of your application, or of a, a specific portion of that, that your application stack, and in this case, the black stars, and tell your QA team or um, whatever team to log in to make sure it comes out how you expect it to before rolling that out up to production. It's not just, because it's just arbitrary HTTP headers it can read from, it can read from, for instance, um, your user agent. So if you have a web app that does X, Y, and Z, and you're like, hey, I want to release an iPhone version of this, the Safari for iPhone um, has a very specific user agent header. So you can actually make sure that it goes to the user agent header specifically to that. Or Firefox, or God forbid, IE, right? Um, you can actually do that. But thank you for laughing at that, by the way. Uh, so it is extremely powerful. Yes, it adds a level of complexity, but it allows you to focus on specific things. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah? No? JJ, you smell? OK. So as you see here, I, fo I, po I, I uh, focus on that specific header of JSON. And let me see here. Which one was that? That was 12. I have some notes when things break. And normally I don't do the uh, mirror thing in here. Oh, here we go. Fuck. That was a problem. Okay. Nope. No, stop it. Copy. 
you wouldn't, as a normal human, you wouldn't have to do this, but because I'm doing weird, yeah, yeah, you would never actually have to do that in real life. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Uh, what? Are you kidding me? Yeah, I thought so. Echo, delete my delete my URL. Oh, well, that's helpful. Okay, well, that's not working how I wanted it to. Let's keep going. Okay, um, so along with Istio, you, apart from just the intelligent routing, which you can tell was kind of like the, the main story that Istio was trying to, add, uh, to answer, or main use case. Uh, having, using the Envoy sidecar, that's what we've injected into those containers uh, installing Istio. Um, we get a lot of things for free. Because Envoy, which is, by the way, you can run Envoy just by itself. You don't have to run it inside of Istio. Istio is just a wrapper of a lot of other things. So it's a E N V O Y. Uh, it's worth reading up on. But one of the cool things about it is uh, you get a service graph for free. Who knows what a service graph is? We got one, got two, cool. So um, I'm actually going to run this here in just a second. And I'll do that now, actually to prove to you that this is how we expect it to work. So as you can see, the cluster IP, we've got the service graph um, service running, uh, which is actually doing what I was expecting it to. That's a good sign. I am going to run work. OK, here we go. We're getting somewhere. All right. Do, do, do. So I used um, Cube Proxy here. Um, I did not. Port Forward. I used Port Forward here to uh, forward 8088 to my local machine. So I can actually bring up this guy. Damn it. <laughs> OK. Well, I genuinely thought that was going to work. We would end up seeing this, because you know screenshots are always nice too, right? So this is the service graph. Um, back to the joke originally about uh, microservices and having a murder mystery every time. As you, get your, as you build your application more and more harder out there, more and more things have to tar start talking to one another. Well, I don't know about you, but I can only remember about 10 minutes ago in my life um, when someone actually asked me to figure out how containers were talking to one another, I would probably go crazy. Uh, being that Envoy and Istio already knows all this data, uh, you actually have a relatively up-to-date to the second, if you can see that right there, um, request per second on each one. It'll actually tell you how um, this one is talking to this one, this one is talking to that one, version A, version B, whatever, and you actually see what's traffic going through it. They have not only this service graph, but they also have a, a, um, a, a grabbable one with a bunch more data inside of it, too, which I always thought was kind of weird that they have both, but whatever. Um, so. Really, really powerful, especially if you want to like throw it up, up on a screen to actually see that app or whatever if you're rolling out something cool. So obviously, um, I'm going to do one more. I'm going to do a couple more commands. Hopefully, one of these will work. Who knows? Um, but we, uh, let's say let's talk about distributed tracing. If I use this term, does anyone know what this is? Distributed tracing. Okay, cool. So. Um, when I talk to people who don't normally know about it, the way the analogy I make, or actually the story I talk, tell, say, is um, something called APM, I believe, from Datadog, that you can throw it in your app, and you can start seeing all the requests through the stack, right? Where you say, oh, it's taken forever to talk to the database, or that application layer sucks, or whatever, you know. Well, you get that for free with Istio. Um, they have something built in there called uh, Jaeger, which I'll run here. And knowing my luck, it's not going to work. <laughs> but uh, you can actually see um, how, uh, how it comes together. There we go. It is forwarding something. 
Of course, it didn't work. There we go. I got Jaeger working for whatever fucking reason. Um, give it a second. I am going to Dallas right now. This actually could be the problem, too, <laughs> is that I am tra um, traversing the, uh, the planet. Um, but, yeah, so this, the services aren't there. Um, basically, this is the equivalent of APM that you can see. Uh, the rest of this presentation, I was actually going to have Jaeger up, and I was going to break the application that we were running and show how the different portions fail at different places. And then it, it grows and shrinks, and you can actually use Istio to fix that problem. So unfortunately, that story is not going to be so great here because oceans. Did it break? Oh, good point. I could give that a shot. Here we go. Helm, oh, helm, helm. Is it delete? Or helm LS. Fuck. No, stop it. Helm LS. What was the name of the release? Oh, well, that's straightforward. Helm, was it remove? Delete. Thank you. All right. Um. Let that go. Ugh. Anyway, oh well, actually, hang well, hang on. Um. That's why I have multiple of these things. Istio, Istio, demo, three. <laughs> okay. Um, commit, three. There we go. And then, um, Anyway, um, so I don't want to sit here and run through all those commands again. Or actually, well, maybe I won't in a second. But let me just finish off the actual talk, and then I can come back to that. And you can see how bad I type. Um, I do want to point out this URL here. Um, if you go to that URL, uh, it is has a lot of great data about how distributed uh, distribute tracing works and how Istio and distributation come together. Uh, it explains it better than I could ever do it, so I'm not going to sit here and talk about it. <laughs> um, also, if you actually saw, if you actually got through this and saw how everything came together, it would be much more powerful. Um, again, uh, I'll get through these couple commands. I'll go back at the beginning, and um, as people ask questions or whatever, uh, I'll keep, I'll run through those commands for that demo three again. And to your point, whoever said that, uh, thank you. Uh, I'll see if I can get that helm working again. Um, so in this presentation, um, I would have actually created, an, um, created a delay of about five seconds talking back and forth to simulate something fucking up on your network. And we would actually look at the distributed trace and see all of a sudden this thing gets really long. That's probably bad. Um, with that, uh, we would have actually changed these uh, almost instantly. We could have changed with just one, one little apply to uh, create services between 50-50. So if something was going horribly wrong on your network, you can actually split your traffic 50-50 between uh, two different pods. So you'd be like, oh, I can actually take this, you know, or 90-10 or whatever. So you can isolate it, keep it still in, in realm, right? Uh, so you can make sure the errors are still happening, debug it, figure out what's wrong, and then make whatever happens. And then if you created a release of like version 3, uh, one simple little command again, because you've already pushed it up to registry or whatever, um, you'd be able to just roll it out and then do this all on the fly without taking down production, which, needless to say, is quite powerful. So that's actually 
all is gonna do, so I'm gonna go back and try to run those Helm commands here again in a second. This is the actual um, the presentation right there, Istio overview. That's my contact info. Um, I also have awesome at IBM.com, by the way. Okay. Actually, the email, awesome at IBM.com. Um, so I'm, I am that guy. Um, so please, if you have any questions or whatever, um, don't hesitate to reach out to me. My job is to make your lives better. Um, that's literally my job. Uh, so let's, if you guys, I mean, that's more or less all I was going to do. I'm going to try to get that Helm thing working here for the next um, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. So I'm going to just do that. I'm going to take this microphone off. Uh, cool. We good? Any questions that I can just answer for everybody, or do you want to just see me typey typey? I can just, I can, you know, comment what I'm doing and be like, fuck, fuck, fuck. Yes. Oh, of, of, uh, is that Kubernetes in general or Istio specifically? Buy a bottle of scotch. <laughs> um, so that's a great question. There are, uh, so Istio opens, um, his question was, if I need to debug something that happened on my Kubernetes cluster, and please tell me if I'm answering, uh, answer, uh, restating this incorrectly. Um, if, I, if I had an Istio running inside my Kubernetes cluster and shit hit the fan, and I didn't know what to do, how would I debug it? Is that, is that a good way of describing it? How do I get it into the Istio that I uh, So um, luckily, uh, in one of the things in, inside of Istio that comes along with it, actually Grafana gets installed. So if something really goes wrong, you have a visualiza visualization of what's happened, and you can say, oh look, it dipped here, something went bad. Then you would go something along to the longings of line, Jaeger for instance, and use one of those traces to be like, okay, I'm, this is supposed to talk to this, this is supposed to talk to this. Okay, this is broken. You look at Jaeger to figure out why is it broken going to this specific uh, microservice or something like that. And then from there, you go, get into that container somehow, look at the logs or whatever and work from that. So it, it gives you a really high 50,000 foot overview or what, what would it be? 5,000 meters, is that, right? is that right? Is that, is that good? I don't know. <laughs> um, and then, I'm trying, I'm trying, come on. Um, and then, and then you kind of, you, you, there is a path to be able to debug relatively quickly. Did I answer your question? Cool. Any other questions? Or do you want to just watch me typey typey and use random profanities? Typey typey and profanities. Sound good. <laughs> All right. So, um, oh, by the way, another thing if you haven't used Kubernetes a lot, um, and you are planning on using it, you will alias the word or the letter K to kubectl. You will, and I will take that bet that it, you said you won't. Oh, well, you will because writing kubectl out so tiring, so tiring. Okay. Yes, sir. Really? Can you tweet that at me and I'll, 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 I'll get it out to that. That's awesome, thank you. Uh, so he just found a, a great alias for a bunch of different kubectl commands, yes? And uh, we'll get that out there to everybody because that, you're right, it is, typing these commands are so frustrating. <laughs> okay, so let's come over here, let's come over here and go back over here. Oh, by the way, I hope everyone learned something off of this talk, or at least peaked an, peaked an interest in something else that you can run with later. Um, that's kind of my goal for most of my talks in general, because I, you know. Exactly. Well, I came here 45 minutes early to make sure the shit was working. <laughs> Uh, store of my life. All right, so let's create that service account again. That looks good. Let's create tiller is installed. That looks right. I, I don't care about security. 
because I'm demoing things. Now let's try. Helmet saw, okay. Don't touch it. Just let it do its thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go through the command. This is a brand new uh, Kubernetes cluster. I, I spun up four different ones because I knew shit like this was going to happen. Um, so I connected to a third one. Um, the first one actually has everything already set up on it that I could kind of click through, but the value is actually see how all the commands come together and changing things around. Maybe. Come on. So uh, does everyone know what a namespace is inside of Kubernetes? Yeah? OK. Um, just in case you didn't raise your hand while this is going, namespacing is a way to kind of uh, segregate um, different applications, different um, stories inside of Kubernetes. Um, there are a lot of, s there's a lot of arguments going on right now about, uh, because I go out to do training on Kubernetes quite a bit, uh, I spin up multiple, hang on, that might have worked, it did. Yay! Okay, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, we're, make, we're making progress here. So as you can see, everything came down. It did all its sanity checks and stuff like that. Okay. Um, by default, uh, the um, uh, Istio installation doesn't actually install Jaeger or um, the service graph applications. You actually have to use that Istio demo specifically because they created um, with 105, which is the version we have here, um, a, mo a higher, a more flexible way of taking things in and out of it. So, uh, for instance, Datadog has a pluggable thing that they can put their application inside instead of using the distributed tra tracing. So, um, which is really powerful, uh, assuming you can afford to pay for Datadog. That was a bad joke. All right. So here we go. All that's coming in. This is looking better. Why are you not doing what I want you to do? OK. Oh, and I didn't point this out on the the first time through. As you can see, there's Grafana. Do you see Grafana? No, you're not paying attention. Um, you want the stable release. Istio moves extremely quickly. I believe there was a talk yesterday about Istio, and a lot of the feeling of that was Istio is not ready for prime time. Is that is a good way of describing it? I disagree with that. Um, the Istio is 1.0 release. Uh, I wouldn't, there are specific use cases that it's extremely powerful for. Um, I don't go shooting blindly. Do your research beforehand. But I do suggest using stable. Don't, don't use unstable. That, that's, that doesn't, yeah. <laughs> don't use unstable. <laughs> okay, so let's install book info again. And then do the sanity checks. And then Make sure this works, and then echo. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. And then come up here. One forty-four, fourteen. Come on. Did I get that right? One forty-four, fourteen, sixty-two. That looks right. And I can think. Did I miss that? No, no, 90, 80, isn't it? Oh, eight? Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. Maybe? Yeah, right? <laughs> They're extremely secure. <laughs> All right, the next talk's starting here in what, five minutes? 
Okay, well, th thank you, everybody. I'm going to keep hacking on this. <laughs>